Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this uh, video, I am sharing my learnings from the discourse, uh, Many Kinds of Feeling, Middle Discourses 59. Uh, so in this discourse, basically, there is this a bit of an argument between uh, two people. One is Master Builder Pankagya and Venerable Udayi. So uh, one uh, of them said that uh, there are two kinds of feeling that Buddha has said, pleasant feeling and you, and painful feeling. Other one said that, no, Buddha has said three types of feeling, pleasant feeling, painful feeling and neutral feeling. So they were kind of, a, you know, confused as to whose opinion was right. So they went up to the Buddha and, and then Buddha said that wherever I have spoken as per the various occasions, see Buddha's knowledge, he had adjusted as per the audience, right? Whichever audience had to receive a particular sort of knowledge, he used to adjust. So he said, Buddha said, I have spoken of two feelings at one place in one explanation. In another explanation, I have spoken of three feelings, five, six, eight, thirty-six or hundred and eight feelings. I have explained the teaching in all these different ways. This being so, you can expect that those who don't concede, approve or agree with what has been well spoken will keep on arguing. That means people who don't agree with what I have spoken will keep on arguing with each other. I have explained this teaching in all the different ways. Right? So Buddha was saying that, so the important lesson here is that what we need to understand is that Buddha ha had this art of contextualizing the knowledge for that particular audience. So somewhere it may be that, you know, one knowledge is appearing somewhere as this, but appearing somewhere as something else. So, but, you know, it's interlinked, right? It's basically right for that particular situation. So unnecessarily, if we argue, then it will, you know, we will kind of uh, deviate from our spiritual path, right? Let us focus on the on the main thing, which is the Noble Eightfold Path, and let us stick to that and follow that path. Following the path, you know, see what I see a lot of people who unnecessarily they are into the philosophies. See, there are two things. One is philosophy, right? And for, for philosophy, there are thousands of people who have come and died, right? Without directly experiencing anything, they keep on arguing on philosophies, right? They keep on fighting their entire life on philosophies and they die. We have not to be those people. We have to be people who have to directly experience what Buddha's teaching was. Follow the path of Buddha's teaching and directly experience through our meditation, through our right conduct, through the wisdom, right? The threefold, noble eightfold path. Eth ethical conduct, mind development and wisdom, right? So that is one thing that do not get stuck into the minor thing that Buddha said this, no Buddha said that. No, we will not get stuck in it. We will look at the big picture because, see, understand this. 45 years Buddha traveled here and there. Entire Northeast India he covered. So, wherever he went, he had to adjust his teaching. Like, for example, Buddha says 108 types of feelings. So, in a particular place where they, the audience was so subtle, was so refined, that he might have thought that they could, have, they could be given this knowledge of that subtle, you know, uh, uh, knowledge. Right? which a layman would not understand. So for a layman, it may be like two or three feelings only. Right? So that this is just my understanding. One thing is that, that is coming out, one lesson that I could learn. Then Buddha talked about the five, five sensual stimulation, right? Sensual stimulation. What sensual stimulation gives? Sensual pleasures. And sensual pleasures are, are like, you know, a snake bite. You know, when we enter into that sensual pleasure, it looks so good. Right? We eat a gulab jamun and we feel so good. Right? And then we, we get the results. Right? Similarly, all the senses, we have to exercise restraint on those senses. Right? Otherwise, we will suffer. Because of this craving that comes with the sensual pleasures, it will cause us suffering. So what are the sensual stimulation? Buddha says, sights known by the eye that are likable. So if, if you're a man and you see a woman who, was, who is beautiful, Right? So that is this sensual stimulation. Right? Then sounds known by the ears, smells known by the nose, tastes known by the tongue, touches known by the body, which are likable, desirable, agreeable, pleasant, sensual and arousing. The pleasure and happiness that arises from these five kinds of sensual stimulation is called sensual pleasure. So here Buddha is defining what is... Because in many of the discourses, Buddha said, said that exercise restraint over the sensual pleasures. So here he is defining what is sensual pleasure. Pleasure derived from the senses. The contact of senses with the outside world results in a feeling which is a pleasurable feeling. 
and this pleasurable feeling results in craving and that craving becomes the reason of suffering right so we need to be careful when we are engaging with the world so we cannot stop ourselves we cannot be like secluded and meditate in a heart and all that we are lay people but somewhere try these sense doors guard those sense doors and what is the best way to guard the sense doors by mindfulness practicing mindfulness of our seeing hearing tasting smelling so if you are hearing be mindful if gossip is happening or speech you know don't don't gossip practice mindfulness because first thing is mindfulness then you can exercise restraint right okay then buddha is saying that there are those who would say that this is the highest pleasure that sentient beings experience sensual pleasures so buddha said no but that is wrong view the there is another pleasure that is finer than that and what is the pleasure now buddha comes to the four jhanas four absorptions that means a mendicant uh, who goes into his meditation who gets deeply absorbed in his med med meditation goes through the first absorption second absorption third absorption fourth absorption so buddha is talking about that that the pleasure that one gets that is like called the supra mundane pleasure so buddha realized at the time of his near his awakening that see not all pleasures are bad so one of the things what buddha was doing is that all the extreme austerities and everything giving pain but then buddha realized if i give too much pain then i will not be able to experience this supra mundane pleasure and a supra mundane pleasure is definitely you can have that pleasure it's not that any pleasure is bad you know the the whole of the, the ascetics the you know people who just believe in giving themselves pain they do not realize that this pleasure you can have on the course of your awakening right it's not that only sensual pleasures are there so buddha said sensual pleasures is one thing but when you go into a absorption right deep meditation you get supra mundane pleasure you you would have also got in deep meditation it happens no whenever meditation is deep we get pleasure we get calm we get relaxation right that pleasure is that you know of more finer and subtle pleasure which buddha said that which pleasure is there then buddha says there are those who say that the, this is the highest highest then buddha talks about many other pleasures like as you progress in your uh, meditative journey then you get go into the dimension of uh, no beingness nothingness all these things and finally the cessation of perception and feeling where perceptions also cease feelings also cease right so that is like the, even a higher pleasure right so basically this discourse was mainly one thing buddha clarified on the feelings that there can be basically two feelings pleasure and uh, pain but depending upon the audience he categorized even more second thing is sensual stimulation buddha talked about what are the sens sensual stimulation and then buddha talked about the pleasure in meditation which is far higher than the sensual pleasures which we can which we should cultivate right so these are the three things that uh, i could gather from this discourse uh, the link to the entire discourse is there in the description do please read this discourse at your end also and share your insights in the comments thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo buddhaya